Okay, so we are moving on to bowls. And bowls are gonna require us to start thinking about a trimmed foot. So we're gonna be pay attention, paying attention to the floor. Again, just like with cylinders, it's instead we're gonna be focused on trying to make a nice rounded floor that's smooth. So think about your, how your spoon scoops food out of a bowl. You don't wanna have any weird chattering on the bottom. We wanna be nice and smooth. That's our the main objective of this assignment. And we'll get into making different shapes, different sizes, different uses, and all of that stuff later. But for now, we're just thinking general purpose bowl. And to get started, what we're gonna wanna use is about two and a half pounds of clay. You can use anywhere from two to three pounds max. And that'll just give you enough clay to play around with in terms of making a bowl that you'll be able to use you know, for food if you want to eat out of it. So all the clay prep is about the same. You can do all the techniques that you learned with making cylinders. All we're going to change now is we're going to start using a little bit more of our right hand for centering. And this is called coning up and down. It's what you often hear it called. So left hand is still doing the same as before where a vertical palm pushing forward makes the clay start to rise and when you tilt your, your palm the clay goes down. So what I mean about coning is my right hand is going to be giving an opposing pressure to my left hand so my left hand is pushing forward my right hand is going to be pulling toward myself in a squeezing fashion so as I squeeze the clay moves up you can see it getting taller and then since the clay is getting taller, I'm gonna to have to move my hand up a little bit more. So when I center now, and the clay starts to go down, I can move my hand down with it. It'll seem awkward at first, but you'll be able to get the hang out of it, or the hang of it pretty quickly. But just remember, when you squeeze at the bottom, although it looks like it in this motion, I'm not actually pulling the clay up the clay is going up and then my hands are following. So just get in the habit of squeezing down here. See my thumbs are pointed up. Let the clay pass up through your hands and then you can move your hands up. Clay goes back down. Notice that my right hand is still supporting this thumb and it's, my fingers are also keeping that bottom edge nice and neat. All right, so the ball will look pretty similar to that of your cylinder. It's just a little bigger now. Opening is like exactly the same. A really stiff left thumb pushes, pushes straight down. The only thing that changes here now is since we're making a bowl that we're trimming, we want to leave a, a little bit of thickness on purpose. So. I'm gonna be shooting for about a half inch. That's right around a half inch, so I'll leave it. You gotta think, we're gonna have a quarter inch tall foot, a quarter inch thick wall at the floor of the pot, so that means we're gonna to, gotta to leave a half inch down there. All right, so now opening is gonna change. So before with our cylinders, you had a flex thumb. Now with bowls, we're gonna roll our thumb. And as I push to the left, I'm going to slowly start letting my thumb drift up. So what's happening is the floor is opening and slowly establishing a curve. You can do that a couple times to slowly widen this out. And it's going to be the same concept as our cylinders, where my rim has passed my base, so I'm going to stop. and then. We are still gonna compress, so think about, this is step three in our cylinder, so it's the same step. We're compressing our floor. You can use your thumb, compress towards the middle. And keep compressing. Since the clay's a little thicker, we're gonna be dealing with drying inconsistencies, so if you forget to compress the floor back in and you dry your pot too quickly, you can end up with a nasty S crack. You also have your wooden rib in your toolkit. You can use that. This is the same 
sort of tool, it's just a different style of rib, but I can use this nice curved edge, hold it really tight with two hands, and I can just compress. And this gives me a really mechanically smooth floor for my bowl. So it's a great starting point for your bowl. But there's no reason why you can't just do that with your thumb. This is just an option. It depends on your own sensibilities. Do you like really clean lines where there's no evidence of the maker? Or do you like to show the gesture and the little inconsistencies of your fingertips? If that's the case, use your thumb. Right? It makes some really nice marks with your thumb. But nonetheless, make sure you compress. And then our next step is the exact same for cylinders. We're just going to recenter. So we have that inward taper happening right now. The only difference now is that our floor is rounded instead of flat with the corner. Okay, so what's going to happen to keep our floor round? So think about our floor is going to be a nice round bowl. My hand's going to be right down at the base and it's going to sweep towards the right hand as it's pushing. So left hand's going out towards the right. As soon as they meet up together, then both hands move up. I'm gonna really try to avoid digging my hand into this corner here. So, left hand begins to sweep out towards the right. The right hand is doing its typical pressure. And then when they meet, both hands come up together. and then ease off at the rim. So with bowls, since they are gonna be getting wider and wider, we wanna do that in really small steps. So that's why right now it's vertical. And as it gets thinner, the wall's gonna go out a little bit more each time. And since that's gonna happen, I'm gonna do my best to keep the rim a little thicker than I would think initially. Right? Because as it gets wider, it's also going to thin out on its own. So you don't want to make your rim too thin too early. So let's do that sweep from the middle, following that inside, trying to be mindful of a really nice gentle curve. Hands meet up together, and then I thin out the wall a little bit. Okay, so it's getting a little thinner, so I'm going to let that wall start drifting out just slightly. And then I'm going to keep doing these pulls. So I'm going to try to gather some clay. That inside hand is being really mindful to just follow that curve up. I'm not trying to make any inconsistencies in that curve. So this is falling out even more so now. And I have stopped squeezing once I get to the top. All I'm doing is guiding it out just a little bit. Doesn't really look like a bowl quite yet, but we'll get there. So we're doing our thickness first, and then we'll shape last. So as you start getting taller and taller, you're gonna have to be lighter and lighter with your inside hand. Otherwise you can go a little too far out and collapse your bowl. So being mindful of that inside curve again. This one's gonna be a little bit more heavy handed in that I'm going to start shaping. And again, the pressure is very light. I'm just coaxing the bowl outward. All right, I'll probably have one more little shaping pull that I could do. I'm just gonna be really mindful. Again, that inside corner is very important. It's really easy to get a big lump there. Okay. That's about right. Now, we should be comfortable by this point with our potter's knife, and we can get rid of a little thickness down here. This just gets rid of some of the trimming work that we're gonna be doing. And the second half of bowls is trimming that's completing the bottom and we'll get to that in a different video so be patient with that one
Okay, so now I'll, technically this is a bowl, but I could start fine tuning the shape a little bit more. And once I get to the thickness that is desired, throwing lines, if you like the look of throwing lines, by all means, leave them there. If you don't like the look of throwing lines, you can use a rib to get rid of them. You can also refine the shape with your ribs too. You can use a rib on the inside if you want. Not required. This is again, a rib tends to make the pot look a little bit more mechanical and that's just an aesthetic choice. It's not the right way, it's not the wrong way, it's just a different way. Okay, so let's see, I'm gonna just let this rim come out a little bit more. Might use my rib again just to give it a little different shape. let this rim drop down a little bit well, these are just subtle changes you can make to your bowl to give it a little bit more of a unique shape So just to illustrate what we're learning here and what I'm gonna be looking for in terms of our grade. If this is your bowl. I'm just gonna cut it off so we can see a cross section. So what we can see here is it's pretty thick down there at the bottom and that's all for good reason. So I'll do, get to this in our trimming demo later but we're gonna trim a foot and you'll see that this will be the profile of the pot here. We'll do the same thing on this side. So all this clay is supporting the curve of the bowl. And then we're gonna trim the interior of the foot. This is called a foot ring that we'll be trimming. So you can see all that other clay is gonna go away and we're gonna be left with our bowl. But one thing I do want to focus on. So we're going to be attempting to get a nice, smooth, uninterrupted curve the whole way. Sometimes what happens is we get a little too heavy handed with our inside hand and we tend to push over all this thick clay and you get what is called a beginner's lump. And all that means is you're pushing really hard right here because it's thick and as your hand moves up, you go up and over that lump and it gets really easy to push the clay and widen it out. So you'll end up with this, uh, this little lump here and it's not the most attractive thing in terms of, it's just a, a sign of what happens when we're learning to make bowls, it's totally okay. So we're just gonna try to combat that and be mindful and try to keep a nice smooth curve on the inside, all right? It makes scooping out with a spoon nice and smooth, right? There's nothing to catch your spoon. And as you get more and more advanced with your bowls, you can start making decisions on the interior yourself, right? Um, as long as it's all within good reason, right? When you do things intentionally, it's one thing, but when they happen on accident and um, you didn't mean for it to happen and it's not what you liked, that's what we try to correct. But um, early on, all we're gonna try to do nice smooth curves okay so go check out the trimming video once you get some bowls made and you'll be able to learn the next step so good luck with making your bowls guys